I want to talk to you about seven phrases you should never use when you're talking to your spouse. We're bringing sexy back. We're bringing sexy back. Let's get it started. Pardon, won't you give it up? Hello, beautiful lady. Yes, I am talking to you. It is Thursday, and you know what goes down here on Thursday. Wife Life with Dr. Gail goes down here on Thursday. So do me a huge, huge favor. Make sure that you're hitting the subscribe button and the little bell right next to it so you'll know when I go live. And so tonight, I want to talk to you about seven phrases you should never use when you're talking to your spouse. Seven phrases you should never use when you're talking to your spouse. And I know sometimes this is hard because I am so guilty of using these phrases, I could just slap my own self. But I'm just trying to tell you that when you use these different phrases, it is going to put them in a defensive posture. And the thing is, is that we want to have free flowing communication. So let's get into these phrases. Phrase number one, I'm done. I'm done. What does that mean? If you are in a bad situation and your marriage is in a bad place, that could mean I'm done. I want a divorce. But most of the time when we say I'm done, it means that we're done with the communication. We're done trying to make something work. We're done trying to get the uh, situation resolved. It does not mean that I'm done with the other person. But again, if your marriage is in a bad state and you have talked about divorce or you guys are just not seeing eye to eye, that word I'm done can be the catalyst that will push you over the edge or push that other person over the edge. So be careful with that word I'm done. Number two, that's dumb or stupid. That phrase that's dumb or that's stupid makes the other person feel like you don't care about any of their ideas, any of any anything that they have to say. And remember, when you guys got married, you became one flesh. So if you're calling your spouse dumb, you might just be calling yourself dumb. So think about that. That's dumb. That's stupid. And I used to be so guilty of that. When Gil's like, we should do so-and-so, so-and-so. I'm like, no, that's dumb. That's a dumb idea. Not meaning that I was calling him dumb. I was calling the idea dumb. But to him, he internalized that I was calling him dumb. So be very, very careful with that phrase. That's dumb or that's stupid. Number three, leave me alone. That phrase can be taken so many different ways. Just leave me alone. A better way is if you're in a situation where you you're keep bumping, bumping heads, instead of saying, leave me alone, let's say, let's put a period behind this right now. Let's regroup and come back. That's a better way to rephrase that instead of saying, leave me alone. Because I've had some husbands and I've had some wives say, well, they said, leave me alone. And I did. I got up, I got my stuff and I didn't go back. Because remember, your words have power and you don't want to speak that into existence. If you want to be married, leave me alone. Number four phrase to stay away from. Blank does that for his wife. Blank does that. For, for her husband, those are two other people. That's not your spouse. Don't compare your spouse to other people trying to get them to do something for you or with you because that puts them in a negative space and they don't want to be compared to someone else's spouse. So therefore, they're probably not going to do or or participate in what you want them to participate in because they're already feeling like you're comparing them to some other woman or some other man. Don't do it. Phrase number five to stay away from. 
Here we go again. Here we go again. That's a huge one I used to use, right? And the thing is, is when you say, here we go again, even though you're talking about something current, it automatically brings that person back to another situation that was similar. And then they're going to say, you're bringing up the past. I thought we was done with the past. But when you say, here we go again, it's like you've been there, done that, and got the t-shirt for it. So stay away from that. Because again, we say we don't want to live in the past. We say we don't want to repeat the negative things in our marriage that have happened in the past. But when you say, here we go again, that means that you're not staying current. That means that you're not listening to the current situation that you want to go back and rehash what did not work or what happened in the past. So stay away from that phrase. Number six, you never. You never take me out to dinner. You never say I'm beautiful. You never talk kind to me. You never have time for me. You never have sex with me. But the more you never, the more that puts that person where, yes, I did. I took you out last week at 12 o'clock. We went to lunch at so-and-so. So it puts them in a posture where they're going to refute every, your, every time you say you never, they're going to bring to your remembrance the time that they did. And it's just going to be a big confusion. So stop using the word you never, because remember your words have power. And if they have never done it, speak it into existence and say, we're going to start having a date night every single Friday or whatever day. Whatever that is, stop using you never because I'm telling you, the person will search, your spouse will search for the time that they did. And number seven, you always. You always. That just put them in a box where you have told them that they have never grown. You always say this. You always do this. You always react like that. That's not true. People have the ability to change and to grow and to expand. And when you say you always, that means that you never are going to ever see growth out of them. You're never going to see the good that they do because they always are doing something that you don't approve of. And so I just hope and pray that when you're communicating with your spouse, that you think about these seven things and try to avoid them. Are you going to be perfect? Absolutely not. Because even though I'm teaching you this, I struggle with some of these things as well. But don't use these phrases as weapons against your spouse. Okay? Don't do it. Again, I love you guys to pieces. I am here every single Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will see you next week. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. If you're looking for more resources to take your marriage to a whole nother level, I'm your girl. Please click the link below and visit my website. There's tons of eBooks and books and all kinds of things just to help you on this wife life journey. As well as I would love for you to join me on all my other platforms. You can look for me on TikTok, Instagram, and my Facebook page. I am always hanging out on all my platforms. So click the link below and join my tribe. I truly appreciate you. We're bringing sexy back. We're bringing sexy back. Let's get it started. Potter, won't you give it up?